We back, man. You know, we got DJ in the building, man. This is like legendary for hip hop hoops right here, man. You know, we got DJ in the building, man. The legend himself. So, you know, we gonna wait for him to tap back in real quick. We are gonna ask him a few more questions, and then we gonna get up out of here, man. This week, man, we might have we might have Denim Brown come through. Maybe, we maybe, but let's tap back in tomorrow. There you go. What's good, brother? Um, so so it was a guy who actually made a list. Yeah. And he didn't put you in the top twenty five. I think that's I think that's very disrespectful, man. He's I mean to his defense I mean it's hard to defend it, but he's not from DC, he's from like North Carolina. Well, but he works works for the Wizards radio. So I guess he I guess try to do do some homework. I don't know what it was based on. I don't know how yeah. he got he didn't have me or didn't know about me. But he he not from there. So okay. when I went on his podcast, he um he had like the coach of the math on there and he had the coach of team takeover um on there and they was like bro Demar Johnson the best um player to come from here it's the Fox High School like and he was like yeah my yeah. bad and so he said now nah, I got you top five she might even be top two so he's just like now nah, owe you dinner or something like that he's he's a pop <laughs> okay okay <laughs> that is wild. So the, so the big three, you started playing in the big three. This is when your name started, you know, resurfacing. It started getting back on the stream, uh, on, the, on the scene. You know, I came, when you came out here to Toronto and you played, how was that whole experience, man? That whole platform playing with the big three, playing, like how was Ice Cube, you know? How's that whole thing? Great. It was, it's great, man. You get a chance to... Like you say, you be friends. You friends with Ice Cube, the guy I, I grew up as a kid watching on TV. Um, right. Coaches are all Hall of Fame guys. Dr. J. Yeah, Dr. Lisa J. Right. Barry, Gary Payton, Michael Cooper, Lisa Leslie, just all these people who I grew up like. I, I wanted to be like Iceman. You know, mm -hmm. he was a guy that compared me to. Right. And now you get on these guys every week. And we playing in front of these big crowds. It's, it's like the NBA, but it's three on three. Yeah, no, it was a dope experience for me. When I seen it, I was like, yo, this is dope, man. I actually like this. I wish they would come back. They they never came back. They didn't come back last year to Toronto. Right. I think so, they try to make a way. But you know, I already know NBA guys. You know, we all love Toronto. That's like, that's like most yeah. dudes' favorite. Yeah. When Jared was out here, man, when he was playing for the Raptors, man, we had a blast, man. He loved it out here. I was. It was really upsetting when he got traded, man. He was mad, but you know, we enjoyed we he enjoyed it, man. Him and Justin, his brother, man, when they were out here, we'd we'd we you know we'd hang out all the time, man. So right. you went to the game out there? Huh? Which uh for for when you guys were playing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went I was there, I was there, yeah. I was there, uh, yeah. Had a nice little after party after man, Mona got us together. Yeah, Mona, Mo <laughs> Yeah, Mona, yeah, Mona. She she gets those she gets those parties, man, for sure, Mona. Twenty years. <laughs> That's wild, Mona. Mona is she's known, brother. She's she's well known, man. She knows how to put a to get the uh to get her a really good party, man. So, you know, we ain't mad at her for all, man. That's wild. So big three, um, they're coming back with it. When 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 is that when is that gonna actually take place with with this whole corona thing? Cause I said you said oh. I think you said you was working out trying to get back into shape for it, right? But next year though, because what happened was they pushed it back to next summer. It was supposed to start this past weekend. Okay. The first game was supposed to be this Saturday, but because we can't trying to like compete with the NBA and the Corona stuff and stuff being shut down, yeah. so they just said we're gonna this summer and bring it back next summer. Yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense. How, how, that was my next question, man. How do, how do you feel about the whole NBA and coming back? You, do you think they should start it? You know, do you, how do you feel about this bubble? Because, you know, you got a couple of players, I think like Lou Williams, Kyrie, they're not really feeling like, you know, they want to play. How, how, do, how do you feel? What's your thoughts about the whole bubble 
and all the other stuff? For for me personally, right? If I would I would want to play, like, cause I love to I love to play basketball, mm. like, and especially guys sitting out not getting no money, like that ain't gonna that ain't gonna help us. I know all them guys rich, but you sitting out not getting paid. So I would any way that I can play basketball, especially in the NBA, cause that league ain't gonna last forever for everybody. Some of them guys that's there now not gonna be there next year when that draft come and new the new people come in the league. So mm-hmm. I would want to take advantage of any time I could play play in the league. And if they gonna create a safe environment for everybody, then dudes is gonna get a chance to compete for a championship. And me selfishly just sitting in the house, I would, I want to see it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's crazy because it could um. How do you feel? Would you would you put an asterisk on this season, on this championship? Only way I would do that is if if somebody if somebody wins a championship and doesn't play against that team's whole team. Right. Okay. Right. Right. It, like if a main star, if somebody be like, "I'm not playing because I I don't want to risk it," and that caused and that team had a real chance, and that caused another team to win, then I'll give it that. Right. Cause I, cause I know I know um. Dude, Ryan Hollins, man, he always he always talking crazy about the championship that the Raptors won, man. We we not we not big fans of Ryan Hollins at all, man. He stayed trying to put a, he stayed trying to put an asterisk on our chip, DJ, man. That shit is crazy. We're not big fans. We're no longer fans of Stephen A. Smith. What and do you do, Ryan Hollins? Because because he's saying the same thing. If KD was playing, if K, we know what KD would have been doing if he was playing. We understood that, but. It's not like we would have won no games. We actually beat the Rap, um Golden State that year twice, and that was probably the first time that happened. And, and probably the whole time, you know, Golden State's been good. You know what I mean? We beat them with KD. He dropped fifty on us, but <laughs> you know what I mean? Like we we still won. But they always scream in this asterisk, asterisk. We're not we're not fans of Stephen A. Smith right now. Or Ryan Hollins, man. <laughs> I'm gonna put that out there, man. Like they can't, they can't take that trophy away. No, 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 right? And we, it, yo, listen, man. It took us twenty five plus years, man, to do that, man. You know, we were we were on that list of teams that you know never got a championship, but now we got it. And then people try to put the asterisk beside it. Right. We, we weren't we weren't too happy about that, man. But like you said, you can't take that chip away from us, man. Enjoy that shit. Take it away. Y'all got a championship. Y'all got the biggest artist in the world. Shit. Facts. It's crazy, man. So I got one more question for you, man. I'm gonna let you go, man. Um, Cincinnati, bro. You you went back and you graduated, man. You know what I mean? That that was something big. I know. I know. Um, I seen a little a little doc that you guys did in in your mom. You know that was really special for her. Take us through that whole thing, man. So I was I was playing in in DR, like I was saying. I was just over there chilling. Um, and I came back for a homecoming to Cincinnati. I haven't been back since Hugs left. It was, it's been years since I came back to Cincinnati. So the coach Cronin, who was the head coach, who he was an assistant when I was here, and he he recruited me. He was just like, man, I want to holler at you. He said, you should think about coming back to school and helping me coach these guys. So I said, let me think about that because I'm I'm still playing, and I wouldn't be getting paid to come back and coach because I'm still in school. Right. So. I had to sacrifice that, leaving my family and leaving, stop stop playing ball to, and getting paid to play and come out of Cincinnati to do a whole bunch of schoolwork and coach for free. So, and uh, it was a sacrifice I had to take. I got back here and all I do is get shown love every day from the people in Cincinnati. And I wasn't sure because I played here just one season. Mm. And, they're usually getting guys for four, four and five years, so they getting a chance to put them and love them. And I, I was out of here so fast, but, right. they, but they still love me so much, especially for that team, because what I, they never got a player, probably that was that was like highly, you know, recruited or ranked as me. And yeah. then we were supposed to win that championship, and then break his foot. Like Fact. they know we winning it. But yeah, I hear all the time, definitely like, you winning it. Right, your year is the best team we've had, and this, this, and that, and like, and people remember like specific stuff. So I get a lot of love here, 
um, doing the schoolwork and, you know, being in practice and stuff every day was, wasn't easy, but I had to get it done. It wasn't mm. like the first, first time I knew I was leaving, so it didn't matter. This time right. I was here to finish. Luckily, we got internet now, and I can do online. I was able to do online classes. Right. And I, and I was able to knock it out. Right. And you and you, I think th you, like, fast track. Like, you you did it in, like, a couple of years or something like right? Yeah, I, I had to basically start over. I, I, was, I was only able to transfer, like, a few of my credits for that year because I left before the season ended. Like, my uh, freshman uh, I didn't finish that year. I had to be lost. You got out of there. <laughs> the summertime while I'm playing big three, I'm I'm taking five classes. And so I was I was not out because I wanted to get it done as fast as I can so I can be eligible to I mean I'd rather work in the NBA, but I I wanted to be able to coach in, in college too. The plan was I thought I was gonna move up to the bench once I graduated. But then my mm. coach took that UC. Oh yeah, yeah, he did, he did, yeah, yeah. That's why I, I seen the little doc, man. Um, you know, and your mom, she was like, you know, he promised he was gonna buy me a house, and he's right. like, he did that, and he's like, he promised me he's gonna graduate, and he did that. You know what I mean? So I, I could just see like the joy in her face, man. Like you know, you whatever you said you was gonna do, you ended up doing it, man. So I was like, yo, that 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 is amazing, you know, because you know a lot of guys, man, they never come back, man. And I understand you playing in the pros for how many years? It's like you know you got a whole bunch of money. It's just like, it's just sometimes it's not needed, you know. Sometimes guys just don't want to do it. So you 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 know how it is, man. You know you play with a bunch of guys, but especially you know, in my I'm, situation, you got to start over. I was just yeah. And still don't graduate. Mm -hmm. I did one, and I had to start over. So it was it was tough. But That's what crazy. would I do? What I do like about me coming to school instead of going right to the NBA is I do have a Cincinnati. That's that's a second home to me. And yeah. I, had I went to the NBA, I wouldn't I wouldn't have had that because when you play for a team's university, when you play for a university, them people will always love you. You're always associated with that university. Mm -hmm. So I got love from the Cincinnati people, like forever. Right, that's big time. That's big time. You, you know, you you've been through so much, man. You know, the accident. You know what I mean. You came back from that. You know, you still had a a, a pretty good career. You know, you graduated. What what kind of advice do you have for the, for the young kids, man, out there that look up to Demar Johnson, man, and want to be the next Demar Johnson? Right, just don't just don't give up, man. It's it's a lot of opportunities out there for you. You got to take advantage of them. Take advantage of all them opportunities. If you want to go to the next level in basketball, you got to work your ass off because there's thousands and thousands of people who want a little bit of spots, and you got to be special to get it. If you're in school, and even I try to tell the guys who, who play in these colleges, the chances are is this is a very small percentage of you guys going to make it to that next level. So while you're here, just do the work. Take advantage of this free degree so you can use that after you after you finish playing because you're going to be finished playing at some point in time. And a lot of you guys might not play past this. So, mm -hmm. you know, don't y'all chicken off and think everybody think they can get drafted and they not. Right. That's wild. So so what what is next for you, man? Like what what is next for you? You know, you're going to play in the big three next summer. You know, we're definitely looking forward to that. You know what I mean? I hope you guys come back to Toronto. I definitely want to check that out. If not, I'll be watching it on TV. Or, you know, if it's close, then you know we'll we'll definitely go out there and watch it. But what what is what is next for you? Is coaching in the near future for you? More coaching? Hopefully, I'm just trying to just trying to work in basketball. I mean, my my goal, I want to be in the front office, and and I've been using this big three as an experience for that because I've been the captain of my team the whole time. So I'm responsible for drafting a team and deciding who plays and stuff like that. So this that's been giving me good experience. To, I've already been a GM basically mm -hmm. for, for three yeah. years. Yeah, yeah. So taking that experience hopefully I can translate to an NBA team or if it's scouting or if it's coaching or if it's in college. I'm just trying to work around basketball. 
um, I'm gonna probably start um, doing some some workouts around here in Cincinnati, because um, unlike it, unlike in DC and PG County, it's not a lot of pros that's, mm. that's out here. They don't have they don't have the the stuff we have in DC. The, the training they don't have the pros that's there to show them the way to let them know that that is real. That you know you can make it. So I'm gonna try to create that atmosphere around here as much as I can until until something comes up in NBA or something. Okay, that's what's up. Um, say catch you catch you Tuesday nights, seven p.m. in the lobby, IG live tomorrow. Okay, we definitely gonna check that out, man. We definitely gonna guy. check that out, man. Okay, but tomorrow, man, I don't want to hold you no longer, man. I really appreciate this, man. Um, you know, this is a pleasure for us at Hip Hop Hoops, man. You know, this is legendary. You know, because a lot of the city, you know, they know you. You know, we got a lot of love for you, brother, and um. You know, whatever you're doing, we want to support and show love, brother. So I just appreciate you coming on, you know, Hip Hop Hoops with me, sitting down and just going through your whole journey, man. It's an incredible story. You know, I'm a fan, you know, I'm always continuing to be a fan of yours, man, of everything and what you're doing, brother. So I appreciate you coming here and sitting down here with me, man. No problem, bro. I appreciate you having me, man. Interview was good. You you knew, you knew a, whole, a whole lot of stuff because like, you were there. <laughs> Yeah, man, I was, I was, I was, I was there, man, and and I, and I, like I tell a lot of the kids, man, I never seen a player coming out of high school as good as you, brother. And to this day, I've seen a whole bunch of them, and it hasn't changed to this day, brother. So I, I, I you know, I salute to you, brother. Facts, man. I got, I got, I got hip hop knowledge too. I see you hip hop and hoops, so. Yeah, man, we we was, we. Was, I ain't want to hold you, but you know, we always talk, you know, a lot of stuff with hip hop. You know, we always ask guys, you know. You know who's the top five and stuff like that. We got we got a couple of hip hop artists that come on here. You know I'm pretty cool with a lot of the hip hop artists coming out of Toronto. So we definitely do talk a lot of hip hop. You know especially when the guys actually come on the show, we'll do it. We've been doing a lot of IG interviews because you know the whole Corona stuff been going on. So it's kind of been killing. You know you know the you know in contact stuff. But you know those are some of the questions that we definitely ask. You know a whole bunch of the artists or you know even players. You know who's who. Who is the top five artists of all time, or who are you listening to, and all that other stuff? So, you know what I mean. Those are the, so those are some of the questions that we do ask. Who 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 would be top five for you, man? Hip hop artists of all time. I know I got four off the bat. My fifth one be kind of be kind of up and down. Like I got like a I got like three people at, at like five and six, but one is Jay Z. Jay Z, right? So, for Jay Z. M pop big, Eminem. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Like, uh, tricks. I don't think nobody really when, when he get on a song with dudes, he separates himself every time. Yeah. Like, I, I, him, I can't argue with you. I can't argue with you that. Nope. But then it's like a lot of guys I got right there, like Kiss, Joe Button, and Drake. Drake. Okay. But with, with Drake, I, I, I'm not I, I, saying this because you know, I know I did interview, and 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 I, I put Drake <laughs> in that five. It's just he just got he just can't miss. He got too much shit before it's said and done. He probably gonna move up that list because he's still doing. Yeah, yeah I, I definitely I I didn't put Drake in my top five, and you know I got a lot of friends that are affiliated with OVO, and you know they 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 don't like to have this conversation with me. <laughs> <laughs> I always I got I got I got Pac number one I got Biggie then I got I got Hove Hove is is my is probably my favorite who I probably listen to the most but just Pac is just so much more than just music to me you know what I mean so um, I always gonna put Pac before anybody and then Biggie they just impact I think Pac might have been the president if he was still alive man. <laughs> That's how that's how powerful I believe Pac was, right? And then I got Jay Z, of course, at three. I got uh, I got Nas at four, and then I got I got I gotta go with DMX, man. A lot of people don't don't put DMX in that five. And then I got Jay, then I got Fabulous and Drake sitting out in the six and seven spot. But like you said, when it's all said and done, Drake going Drake's gonna be in the top five, man. He like, he has the potential like, to be in the top two, three, man. I like your list for me, like. Nas just kind of went off into another place after a while. 
like yeah. early night, awesome and then he just kind of started. He, he he didn't catch the flow anymore. And I didn't know what he was talking about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was like, man, like, kiss always putting out like anytime he this is rapping, nice, he got man. dope. Shit. And like the people, yeah. I think people sleep on is Joe Button. Always Joe Button, always been. A big fan of his Joe Button is his his wordplay is crazy. Uh, he he's he's uh, very underrated. I think I person. think with him, a lot of people just don't like him as a person. <laughs> so they, they can't see past like they feel like oh he's an asshole. So they can't look right. past that part, right? And you know, but he's dope. You know, as far as lyrics, man. They didn't know he's an asshole until now. Before he right. was put, and he yeah. was looking, but now they see he's an asshole. Now. <laughs> Yeah. No, no, he definitely he definitely could rap. And like you said, Nas, man, he did, man. Like the early Nas was dope, man. You know, he he was nice. He started fading a little bit, man, in the last couple of albums. But but I don't know, man. I, I grew up on Nas. I love Nas, man. But DMX, he, I remember when he came out with two albums in one year and he, he went platinum. Two albums in yeah. one year. And you know that whole movement with Rough Riders was dope. I probably shouldn't say Rough Riders too loud right now because, you know, uh, that boy beefing with Drake right now. <laughs> Swiss Beats. <laughs> like an hour, an hour or so ago, like before, like before I got on the show. Yeah, yeah. It's not, I, I don't know where that shit came from. You know, I just know a few guys out here that I know, they're not, they not really rocking with him right now. So <laughs> it's not, it's not good. They say he apologized. He did apologize, but, you know, Guys that I know, they, 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 you know, they posted on their story were like, "Nah, we're not, we're not having that shit. We don't, we don't care about the apology." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not. It doesn't look like it'll be, it'll end pretty, pretty good, man. Um, I know Drake's not that type of dude, and he, he wants to show love to everybody, but you know, I don't, I don't know if this one will end well, man. So <laughs> that's wild, man. Brother, man, once again, man, I appreciate you, man. I ain't gonna hold you up no more, man. This was a pleasure, it. man. Like, this is love for real, man. I really appreciate it, man. Like I said, I'm a fan of yours. Always support everything that you're doing. I appreciate you coming on the show. I'm gonna check out your show tomorrow, man, for sure, man. Check out your show. You know what I mean? I'm, yeah, a, I'm so gonna I'm definitely be tuned in, bro. Uh, if I'm over in Toronto, I'm going to hit you up. I appreciate yeah, you. Yeah, man. Awesome. Yeah, man. Ho ho hope hopefully you guys come out here, man. Next year, next summer, man. If y'all do, man, you know we definitely could kick it, man. For sure, man. Yeah, for sure, man. brother. I appreciate right. you, though, brother. All right. Sure. Thanks, man. Yo, man, that was dope, man. We had we had Demar in the building, brother. Demar Johnson, man. That was that was that was love, man. You know, that's probably probably the biggest. Biggest interview, man. One of the biggest interviews I've done. I'm proud of that one, man. That was that was dope, man. That was that was dope, man. Cause I I met him. I I I met him. You know, obviously when we were in high school. You know, but um, that was years ago. Obviously, he's not gonna remember. But um, Leonard Stokes, my guy, man. Leonard Stokes went to Cincinnati with him, so they kind of put the plug back together. So I was able to get him on the show, man. But that that was dope, man. Um, definitely, yo, we're gonna we're gonna check out the lobby, brother, for sure, man. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna come on there and um, you know, definitely check out the lobby tomorrow. Check out the lobby tomorrow, man. You know, Demar Johnson and he got his partner right here. You know, they they gonna be on there tomorrow, seven um seven p.m. The lobby, you know, they they talk about some good stuff, man. You know, so I'm I'm definitely check it out for sure, brother. But um, Denim Brown might be next, man. You know, we we, we we you know definitely, you know. So just look out for that. We got we got a lot more stuff coming, man. We got the merch. You know, definitely probably try to send Demar some shirts, man, and his partner. Um, I appreciate you, brother, man. Definitely, man. We we yeah, we got to get Jack, man. We gotta get Jack. That's why I should ask Demar, man, because I, I his number is not the same. And, you know, I try to send him a DM, man. But we definitely gotta get Jared Jack on this show, man. You know, definitely we gotta get Jared. I just need to get in touch with him. Once I get in touch with him, I know he's gonna come on. But I just need to get in touch with Jack. So, you know, 
DJ, man, if you got Jack's plug, man, let him know I'm looking for him, bro. But, you know, once again, man, we got some more coming this week. You know, me and my partner, Bruce Weezy, we got a lot more, man. It's just the beginning for Hip Hop Boost, bro. So, appreciate everybody for tuning in. You know, this was love, man. This was love from DJ, man. So, we just really appreciate it, man. Hope you guys like the interview, man. And I'm out. <laughs>